what is going on it's medicosis perfect scenarios where medicine makes perfect sense let's resume our biology playlist in the last two videos we have talked about the exocrine pancreas and the endocrine pancreas today we'll talk about the liver and the gallbladder the liver makes the goodies the gallbladder stores those goodies. Gallbladder stores and concentrates this stuff. But if I concentrate too much, I can precipitate. Oh, gallstones. Yeah, which are painful if they get stuck here because the patient will develop a condition known as cholecystitis. Itis, inflammation, cholecyst. Choli means liver or bile. Cyst, oh, the gallbladder. The cyst that contains the bile and it's inflamed. Yep. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. The liver can produce some good stuff and some bad stuff. The good stuff is bile acids and bile salts. The bad stuff is bilirubin. Why do you call these good? Because they help you absorb fat. Oh, emulsification act. And why do you call bilirubin bad? Because this is the waste of the senescent dead red blood cells that the splenic macrophages have destroyed. Because remember, what's the average lifespan of a red blood cell? 120 days. After this, what happens? The spleen destroys the red blood cells and the end result is bilirubin, which is wasteful. It's time for us to get rid of it. You can thank the liver for this. Whether we're talking about good stuff or bad stuff, you can lump them together in a liquid known as bile, which is the product of the liver. So the bile contains both. The bile is made by the liver, stored in the gallbladder. Designed in California, made in China. Sounds familiar? A quick anatomy review. Here is the liver. Has a right lobe and a left lobe. Therefore, we have a right hepatic duct for the right lobe and the left hepatic duct for the left one. All right, they will converge and join together. Ergo, common hepatic duct. And then the common hepatic duct will combine with the cystic duct, which is the duct of the gallbladder. That's why I call it cholecyst, and this is the cystic duct, duh. Now, when the cystic duct joins the common hepatic duct, you have the common bile duct, or CBD, some Joe Rogan action. This common bile duct is gonna meet with the pancreatic duct. Oh, and they will open together in the duodenum. Be specific, second part of the duodenum. Be more specific, posteromedial aspect of the second part of the duodenum of the small intestine of your gastrointestinal tract. Preach. The good stuff is bile acids. Conjugate the acid with something else and you have salt. Sounds familiar? Here is an acid and here is something else and here is a salt. Oh yeah, it makes sense. Back to basics, your diet, carbs, proteins, fat. Carbohydrates are big molecules. We will break them down into polysaccharides and then disaccharides and then monosaccharides. Only the monosaccharides can be absorbed from the gut to the blood. Protein, same thing, protein macromolecules and then polypeptides, tripeptides, then dipeptides. And before you know it, you have amino acids. About fat, you start with the big ones, triglycerides, and then you end up with free fatty acid and glycerol. It's not glycerol, to be honest. It's like monoglycerides or diglycerides most of the time. When you eat proteins, you get four calories per gram. Same thing with carbohydrates, but look at fat, very high, nine calories per gram. Whether you eat carbs, proteins, or lipids, the end result is acetyl-CoA, boom, into the Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, oxidative phosphorylation, baby, giving you the energy currency of the cell. What kind of carbs do you eat? You can eat starch, lactose, sucrose, even fibers. Fibers are categorized as carbs. Proteins, you can eat plant protein, animal-based protein, or you can take some supplements which contain amino acids. You see those doofuses who go to the gym with their protein shake or whatever? It contains arginine, which is an amino acid, among others. And here are fats, please don't forget, not just fats but fat-soluble vitamins as well. Vitamin K, vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin A. If you cannot absorb fat, you will not be able to absorb these vitamins either. And these are the fats that your body will have to deal with. Triglycerides, big, cholesterol, big, essential fatty acids, small in size, fat-soluble vitamins. Function of the bile is to emulsify and therefore enhance the digestion and therefore absorption of lipids. 
If you have watched my previous video, you know that pancreas is exocrine or endocrine. The exocrine has an acinus and a duct. CCK is talking to the acinus to secrete digestive enzymes. But CCK is not only talking to the acinus. Cholecystokinin is also talking to the gallbladder. That's why it's called cholecystokinin. I'm gonna cause movement, kinetic, of the cholecyst, of the gallbladder. Oh, boom. Contract it, squeeze it. The bile is out. The bile will reach the duodenum. Bile from the duodenum and digestive enzymes from the pancreas it will help you digest and emulsify fat and therefore absorb it. Ergo, in order for you to absorb lipids or lipid-soluble vitamins, three organs have to be intact and robust. Number one, liver, which includes the gallbladder and the biliary tree. Number two, pancreas. Number three, the gut, your small intestine where absorption takes place. If those three organs are intact, you will be able to absorb fat and fat soluble vitamins but if i have a problem in my liver and biliary system or a problem in the pancreas or a problem in the gut i will suffer from fat malabsorption not only fat is gonna end up in the stool fat soluble vitamins are gonna end up in the toilet as well and i will suffer from fat malabsorption and vitamin deficiency of the following vitamins k e d and a if you are absorbing anything that's not fat which include carbohydrates and protein you will go to blood vessels why because these are water soluble and as you know blood vessels contain blood which is made of plasma which is basically water so if you're water soluble you're going to the water or blood route but if you're talking about absorption of fat you're not going to blood route because blood is water and you are lipid lipid is insoluble in water therefore i will take you through my lacteal as we have talked before in my videos about the lymphatic system these lacteals are in the villi which line the inside of your small intestine and they will help you absorb fat and they contain a fluid known as chyle which is darker and more opaque than lymph why is it more opaque because it's full of fat it looks milky the role of the pancreas in the digestive system the pancreas can help you digest lipids and non-lipids let's talk about non-lipids when it comes to carbohydrates the pancreas will secrete amylase for you when it comes to proteins the pancreas will secrete trypsin chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidases A and B, and other proteases. Now let's turn our attention to the role of the pancreas when it comes to lipid digestion. Don't forget, secretin wants the pancreas to release water and bicarb. That's not today's top. CCK, however, stimulates the pancreas to release digestive enzymes from the acinus, not from the duct of the exocrine pancreas. What kind of digestive enzymes to digest fat? We have lipase, colipase, cholesterol esterase, phospholipase. Lipase break down the big triglycerides into free fatty acids and to monoglycerides. Colipase is a co-pilot, it's gonna help it. And cholesterol esterase to break down cholesterol esters into free cholesterol. And phospholipids are broken down by phospholipase. And if you want to tie this to pharmacology, check out my video called Arachidonic Acid Pathway to learn more about the profundity of this concept. So, to summarize, the role of the pancreas is chemical digestion via enzymes that digest fat. Contrast that with the role of the gallbladder. We're talking here mechanical digestion. Emulsification, because bile is not an enzyme. Bile will help you emulsification. So the pancreas will help you digest the fat. Liver slash gallbladder will help you emulsify the fat. Both will help you absorb the fat. How do I absorb it? Into the lacteal, which is inside the villus, which lines the small intestine wall. This is a villus. Each villus has microvilli, increasing the surface area available for absorption. All right, fat, you're here into the lacteal and then to lymph vessels, and then we'll take you to big veins. Example is the thoracic duct, which drains the lymph of basically most of the body into the left subclavian vein. Let's go back to square one. I ate fat, big fats, triglycerides that is. All right, break them down into free fatty acids and 
to monoglyceride. And then what? Package them again. Oh, really? Into a bigger molecules? Yes. And you package them into lovely Amazon packages known as chylomicrones. Why micro? Because they are microscopic structures. Why chylo? Because we're talking about chyle, the fluid that's inside the lacteal vessel. The bile is made of many components, including some good stuff and some bad stuff, plus some water, of course. Pause and review. Now, what are the functions of these lovely bile acids and bile salts? Easy. First of all, don't forget they are amphipathic molecules. What the flip is that? It's like an amphibian. Oh, what's an amphibian? An amphibian is an organism that can live in water and on land. Like both? Exactly. Bile salts are amphipathic. Translation. They have a hydrophilic component and a hydrophobic component. Hydrophilic head hydrophobic tail and they organize themselves this way the hydrophilic parts are on the outside and will put the hydrophilic into the inside why because the hydrophilic is near the molecule of fat so we put fat next to fat but the outside is water soluble and there is water outside these are called what my seals oh and then we make chylomicrones and then we are into the lacteal. Lipid, which is lipid soluble, is in the center. Protein, which is water soluble, is on the outside. Let's take it to the clinic. Bile contains bile acids and bile salts, some bilirubin, you know, like good stuff and bad stuff, yeah, and some cholesterol. The job of the gallbladder is to store and concentrate the bile. Too much concentration, you risk precipitation, especially if there is some calcium with it. Before you know it, I develop gallstones inside my gallbladder. These gallstones will be pushed. Why? Because I eat. And when I eat, CCK squeezes the gallbladder. If one of these stones got stuck here in the cystic duct and the bladder is contracting, but there is an obstruction, contraction, obstruction, oops, we are clogged. Clogging equals stagnation. Stagnation invites bacteria. Bacteria will cause an infection and inflammation. And if I have too much inflammation, this is cholecystitis, a very painful condition. To learn more about cholecystitis, check out my cholecystitis video on my channel, in which we discuss everything you need to know about cholecystitis, including the types of gallstones. Okay, medicosis, besides fat digestion, does the liver have any other functions? Of course, metabolism. The liver is the lab of your body. Most of the biochemistry textbooks with all of its pathway happens in the liver. Next, detoxification of the gunk that you're exposed to, whether it's in food or in medications or in environmental toxins. And don't forget, plasma proteins come from the liver. As we have discussed gazillion times before, blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma, water and proteins. The proteins, albumin and globulin. The globulins, alpha, beta or gamma. Beta globulins are the coagulation factors. Gamma globulins are your immunoglobulins or antibodies. Remember albumin, remember coagulation factors, and remember antibodies. And now we'll take it to the clinic. How about cirrhosis? Oh, fibrosis of the liver. This is an end-stage liver disease. Your liver is toast. It has failed. Do you think your liver will be able to conjugate and excrete the bad stuff? No, the bad stuff is going to end up in your blood, causing jaundice, which is a yellowish discoloration of the skin and sclera and mucous membranes. Liver cannot make albumin. Therefore, no one is going to maintain my oncotic pressure. Oh, and now you will have a blood vessel with a pushing force, but no pulling force. You will keep pushing fluid out of the vessel, out of the vessel, out of the vessel, into the interstitial space. This accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space is known as edema. If this edema happens in your belly, you will have ascites, which is a common feature of cirrhosis patients. Next, liver is toast. Liver cannot make coagulation factors. You cannot coagulate you will bleed. Liver does not make antibodies anymore. You are at a higher risk of infections. I have more than 1000 videos on this YouTube channel, plus some premium courses on my website, such as my renal physiology course. 
which comes with videos, cases, notes, and Perfect Nails Ultimate Notebook. You can download it today without any subscriptions. Just download it once and keep it for you forever. Or better, you can try my new surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectsnails.com. Get a 40% discount towards any course by using promo code TOXIDROME for a limited number of students only. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense.